When instructors and students first log into Packback, your screen will look like this. You'll see a list of assignments that have already been created, if applicable. First, we'll talk about creating assignments in our discussion tool, Packback Questions. Clicking Packback Questions shows a list of assignments that have already been set up and gives you the option to manage assignments at the top here. Your assignments are organized by open assignments that are available to be completed and closed assignments where either the start date hasn't approached yet or the due date has already passed. Let's click Manage Assignments to create a new discussion assignment. From here, you can edit all of the assignments you've created so far, either individually or collectively at the top here. For now, let's click Add Assignment. Here, you'll be able to enter the title of your assignment. Add start and due dates to that assignment. and select your posting requirements for this discussion. The start date determines when students are able to begin working on the assignment, and the due date determines when the assignment closes and auto grading will occur. Posting requirements communicate expectations to students and also determine what they'll be graded on when the assignment is completed. In this example, let's use a common practice of asking one question and responding to two peers over the course of two weeks. Typically, that looks like a question on week one and then responding to two peers by the end of week two. Instructors can also set a separate deadline for questions and responses, which I'll show in more detail in the next section. This will allow you to set a separate deadline for questions. So if there is something that I want my students to make sure they've asked their question before they've responded to other peers, I can make sure that question is due on its own date. The assignment's minimum curiosity score is the score students need to meet in order to get credit for those questions and responses. We'll talk about the curiosity score in more depth when we look at actually writing a post in Backpack Questions. For context, the lowest curiosity score minimum you can set is a 30, and it's recommended to increase that score over time as your students get more comfortable with the platform. Instructors can also set individual deadline extensions for students who need more time to complete an assignment. You can enter their name in here and give them their own individual extension deadline. That student will not be graded in their assignment until their extension deadline passes, and the rest of the class will be graded on the standard deadline for the assignment. The guidepost is intended as a space for you to set expectations for the content of this discussion. As an example, let's say the class just read the first act of Romeo and Juliet. So I'd like my students to discuss the first act in this assignment. We are responsible, asking one question about Act 1 of Romeo and Juliet, and responding to two of your classmates' questions by the end of the deadline. From there, it's up to them to formulate their own open-ended questions around this first act. Once I have my assignment set up and ready to go, it's then ready for my students to complete that assignment. In the next section, we'll look at what a student actually sees when they're completing an assignment on Packback. When a student first takes a look at their assignment, they'll be able to see their expectations right at the top of the discussion here. Those are the posting requirements we set up in the previous section when we created the assignment. Students can also see the guidepost outlining the content they should be discussing in this assignment. When they're ready to begin asking their question, they will click this red Ask a New Question button. Here, students are given a space to ask their question, which must be open-ended, and provide a description. The description is where students will provide additional context to help their peers engage with their question meaningfully. 
Some examples could be, why am I curious about this? What is my background knowledge about this topic? Anything that will help my peers to engage with my question meaningfully when they're responding. On the right-hand side, you'll see all of my feedback here that I'm receiving as a student. This is all happening in real time and relating to that curiosity score we mentioned before. Remember, in our example assignment, students need to score at least 30 points to get credit on their first question. As they work, they'll see how close they are to achieving that score. The first category of our feedback that affects that curiosity score is curiosity, which is measuring the quality of the question and the depth of the description. Are they asking an open-ended question? If not, the question will be flagged and likely moderated. In my example here, I have a closed-ended question, so I need to adjust that to be an open-ended question. Once I do that, I'll see that feedback go away so I know I've addressed it and I can move on to my next piece of feedback. The curiosity category is also measuring the depth of my description. Am I writing enough and providing enough context for my peers to respond effectively? The next category is credibility, which is encouraging students to get into the practice of citing a source and choosing credible sources. Here they can enter sources to support their question and give their peers something to engage with when they're responding to the question. They'll also receive some feedback on how credible that source is to help them in choosing more reliable sources. The third category of our feedback is communication, which primarily is focused on formatting and readability. If paragraphs are too short or a student is using a great deal of passive voice in their writing, they'll see that feedback in the communication category. This category is also looking at formatting for headings to make sure the question's description is easy to engage with and flows logically. The final category in our feedback is convention, which is looking at grammar and mechanics. This is the only category that does not affect the curiosity score, which is intentional. Since this discussion is intended as a formative assessment, Packback's goal is to help students practice appropriate grammar and mechanics, not to penalize them for grammatical errors when the primary goal is to get them asking high quality questions and writing more. You'll notice that students see a range here in the curiosity score as they write. To prevent students from being inclined to stop when they reach the minimum score, the goal is to push them to higher levels. As soon as they submit their question, they'll see their score represented underneath that question in the feed. As a student, if I know I need to reach 30 points and I see that I just received a 25 here, that tells me I need to go in to edit my post and bring up that score so I can address more feedback. Addressing more feedback will raise the score for students. If students are looking at their feedback and they're not sure where to start on asking an open-ended question, they can also use our chat feature to get started. Let's say I don't know how to get started asking an open-ended question. Notice that the chat doesn't give them a question, but guides them in how to think through the question. You'll see this feature built throughout the platform and a more robust version forming the foundation of Writing Lab. Throughout the course of the assignment, students have as many opportunities as they need to edit and resubmit their posts, bring up their curiosity score, and ensure they're reaching that minimum score they need in order to receive credit. Once the deadline passes, Packback will grade student submissions, which we'll talk about in the next part of our video. After the deadline passes, Packback will grade student submissions based on the posting requirements that were initially set up for the assignment. As an example, let's say I, as an instructor, have a student who asked their question that we required of them, met that minimum curiosity score, they will receive that 50% of the question score. 
but let's just say they responded to one peer instead of the required two peers. That would give them 25% of that response grade, which would bring their total grade for the assignment to 75%. If that student had a deadline extension, this grading will not occur until their extension passes. Students can make edits and respond to peers until the deadline passes and grading occurs. After that, they'll always have access to closed assignments so they can refer back to them. They just won't be able to contribute to that discussion for graded work. Once the deadline passes, students' grades will show up in the gradebook, which can be accessed on the sidebar here. Instructors can see the grades they received, the breakdown of their questions and responses, and even an option to go look at their work directly by clicking their name. Instructors can then export these grades if need be, but Packback will also sync with your LMS directly to send those grades to your LMS gradebook automatically after the deadline passes. This function can be enabled by clicking Gradebook Sync. If Packback is connected to your learning management system, you can enable the Gradebook Sync function automatically by clicking to turn it on here in the sidebar. When Packback is connected to your LMS, you'll have an option to turn on Gradebook Sync with just the click of a button. If you're having trouble, our support team can help you with this using our live chat at the bottom of the screen here, or by reaching out to our product support team at help at packback.co. Once Gradebook Sync is turned on, Packback is the source of truth. If you need to adjust a student's Packback score, you can do that directly in your gradebook on Packback, and the update will be reflected in your LMS during the next sync. Packback's goal is for discussion on Packback questions to run themselves, and we do not recommend that instructors spend more than 15 minutes a week managing a discussion on Packback. As soon as students post, Packback will look over their posts for the following behaviors. Is it too short? Are they asking a closed-ended question? Did they plagiarize either from the web or from someone in their own class? Are they asking questions about class logistics, like when's the next test or what are we having for lunch today? Even if they use something like ChatGPT to do the writing for them. If any of those behaviors are found after the student posts, that post will receive a flag. Once a post is flagged, it's sent to a team of human moderators at Packback who will look over it and determine if we need to moderate that post from the discussion. If our team does moderate their post, students will receive a coaching email to tell them why it was removed and what they need to do to edit and resubmit so they can receive credit. These coaching notifications will also appear in the notifications bell at the top of their Packback community. As long as students make their recommended revisions before the deadline passes, they'll have as many opportunities as they need to receive full credit. The purpose of this moderation cycle is to prevent instructors from needing to read every single post to make sure students are doing what they need to do in the discussion. You can engage with the discussion as much or as little as you'd like. In the next portion, we'll talk about deep dives, our writing assessment tool.